Hello everyone, welcome to our show. This is your friend Abhishek Pradhan and today there is a really very special guest with us. He is a talented young protege. His name is Mr. Shayan Sheikh. Hey brother. Hey, what's up? Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. My good friend right here is a final year student from the Department of Computer Science in HKBK College of Engineering. And the interesting fact about him is that he has secured a placement with a 20 lakhs package. Congratulations, brother. Thank you so much. How do you feel? Uh, it's good. I mean, it genuinely is a very good feeling. And yeah, we'll talk about quite a lot of stuff. Well, now that you're in your final year, but a few years back when you had just joined the campus mm -hmm. as a newbie, you might have some expectations like making new friends, getting placed, of course, yeah. impressing the teachers, having girlfriends yeah. and all. Okay. okay, this being your last year, how do you feel? You feel your desires are justified? Uh, yeah, I would like to say so. Like, you know, as you mentioned, you know, whenever we come as the first year students, you generally see the most amount of energy in these people because they have the passion to, you know, do something or, you know, whatever it is. Because I personally, I am from Maharashtra. I'm okay. from Mumbai. So, I, this is the first time I'm coming to Karnataka and Bangalore in general. So, you know, coming to a new place and making new friends is always something which I like because I like the cultural differences and everything. So, again, when I, uh, four years back, before the COVID and everything hit, when I came here, I had, you know, a good passion to learn and to grow, but eventually to make sure that when I leave the college, that people will remember that, okay, there was a student with the name of Chayan Sheikh and, you know, he existed and he did something. So, I just wanted to, you know, make sure that people know about me and not just as any other student but they remember me as someone that they respect. Wow, sounds so professional. Okay. Hey wait, you know what, I just remembered, you have a CGPA of 9.3. Yes guys, a CGPA of 9.3 and added to that, you have completed some decent projects. Yeah. Man, seriously seeing that, I really feel that Marvel is true, not a fantasy. Well, tell us something about your projects. First of all, thank you so much for the acknowledgement of you know my CGP and the projects. And uh, yeah, I would like to you know emphasize on this because the, these two combine you know the CGP as well as the projects. These two together have a very good impact because when you have a high CGP as well as good amount of projects, it shows the recruiter and you know what whoever you are reporting to that you're not only a good listener but you're also a good learner. Having a higher CGP is definitely I wouldn't say it is easy or something. But then again, what I personally from my journey have learned is the more casual you take it, like you know, rather than being tensed about studies and everything all the time, I used to enjoy my life even in the first sem. And I mean, I don't even know how I got those marks. But yeah, the journey has been very good for me. Moving on. Oh, I already know this answer. But I even want the audience to know it. Sean, yeah. did you ever bunk your classes? That's something which like normal engineering students do. So given you yourself told you already know the answer, I would like to know what do you think about it. Obviously you know, having a CGP of 9.3. See, that, that is where everyone's wrong. <laughs> so you can have, and that is again, this is one of the points which I wanted to tell. You can have a high CGPA, you can have good projects, you can get placed, at the same time you can have fun. You don't have to, you know, people have that, that, this mindset that, okay, he's having a high CGPA or he's getting placed, so that means he's a nerd, he's always into books and he doesn't go out. Trust, trust me, I was the first venture and I would, literally make fun of teachers and have fun with them and I would often bunk you know so if you are a high CGPA you know you are good in calculations right I would often calculate the 75% or 85% how many classes I can miss <laughs> so calculating yeah. your attendance I mean of course. <laughs> what do you think about it wait wait first of all I just stopped listening when you said that you were seated in the first bench and ha was having fun yeah okay seating in the first bench and having fun huh? yeah I mean it is adventurous. Well, yeah, life is full of exceptions. Yeah. So, right. So, when we used to have like classes for five months, at that time, you know, twice every week or twice every two weeks or once every two weeks, something like that. Sometimes when I have an occasion or sometimes when I feel low or just don't feel like attending, at that time I would just be like, okay, check it. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes you don't really need an occasion to bunk. If you just don't feel like it, it's better to take a day off and you know, Try to rebuild yourself mentally and physically. Oh, so, I'm actually that. glad that I met someone who really knows the definition of bunking. Yeah, it <laughs> isn't just about <laughs> just going out of class. It's not like that is feeling. Bunking. Just do it. Yeah, you can also bunk for yourself. Like, you know, just just right. Around, you know. Right. Sean, yeah. do you have any interesting memories that you want to share with us, like some in canteen, in library, or somewhere? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. I do have quite a lot of memories, and you know, listing a few of them would be difficult. And then again, like you know, we were the batch. You know, we actually came to the college. We had just, you know, first year is when you start meeting people, and you know, you're trying to explore everyone. You know, who actually right. is your friend. So first year is generally when your friendships break, breaks, and you know, you find the real people. Okay. And first and second years, I believe, are the years where. You know, you can go out and you can hang out, hang around more because you yeah, have lesser you have that bonding and yeah, bonding and not just that. You know, you have lesser work from the college, right? Compared to Fair the enough. last two years. So yeah, I do like. Uh, so in the libraries, you have all of this, right? I remember playing hide and seek here with my friends, okay. just after the exams. Right. Yeah, and I also remember uh, when we would study sitting down in the library rather than sitting on because we believed you know it gave us more mental peace oh, sitting wow. between the bookshelves and not because the books were around us okay because genuinely you just now i'm actually curious <laughs> because genuinely no one would dis- you know disturb you when you would just be standing in one corner of the room so that is one and no, then actually i imagine something else oh <laughs> you're pretty <laughs> You know what happens, right? When you get into a library and you're surrounded by books, you know generally what happens. Yeah. But yet again, I'm speaking to a protege. Yeah. And then again, like before this, uh, so you know the current canteen is being renovated. So before this, we had a different, and uh, the currently we have the blue hut. But before right. that, we yes. had gurus and bikes. Uh, yes. And you guys, are, I mean, you guys, I think are the last batch to have witnessed it. Yes. After that, you know, we feel fortunate about it. Yeah. So I have very good memories there. I was very close to the auntie who was, you know, serving okay. there. So often, you know, when I would feel low, I would just go and talk to her because, you know, sometimes homesickness it, it kicks in. Right. Yeah. No, I was actually expecting that you'll say like I'll stick around with friends, a lot of girls, and you'll mention an auntie. Right. But Sean, now at this stage of life, where you can define your own terms, mm-hmm. how do you see yourself? Um, as a man or still a boy? Yeah, so you know everyone has. Uh, so what you see, you know, I am a boy. You know that is how we perceive me. Yes, obviously. But mentally, yes. you know, everyone has a kid inside <laughs> of them, and everyone sort of. So you know, growing up, you know, because when you are in final year and finally get a job, you do get that happiness that oh, I didn't get a job. And if you have a high package, of course, satisfaction is high. I'm pretty sure, and I hope yes, you would be yes, there yes. the next year. But then again, a part of it is that you realize you're growing up. That you know you will be having to cut down many such things, right? But then again, yeah, certain sacrifices are supposed to be made. But I don't suppose I'll lose my child aspect. You know what? After a conversation, I'm more curious to know in how many interviews did you attend before you knew that this is the one for me. Okay, so this was my fourth interview. Before this, I had three more interviews. Okay. My first one was Alcatel Lucent. Uh, it was an off-campus, like one of the faculties referred my name. And I got selected there. They were paying. Wow, me you got selected. Yeah, it was my first interview, and I got okay. selected. So that and again, that, that was a huge uh, moral boost for me. Confidence. Right. Because yes. First interview, I got this. First like interview, that. I'm getting placed. Oh yeah. wow! And then second was Mavantik. It was I think my second itself, and I got <laughs> again selected. <laughs> you got placed again. <laughs> again. Right. Yeah. Yes. And then third one was uh, TCS, but then I didn't really want to work. You know, at an established. And company. don't tell me you got placed there as well. I did, but then I, I didn't attend the yes, final guys, interview. Yes, guys, he got placed there. I didn't attend the final interview because I didn't want to, you know, complete the process. And then finally, when I got, I was waiting for, you know, because I I made a promise to Deepa ma'am, Deepa Udasi ma'am. He and I, she, we had a talk last year. She was like, I'll bring you the companies, you give me the placements. I was like, I'll gear up, you bring them. <laughs> so I was waiting for, you know, such an opportunity and then it arrived. And I think the knock was pretty loud enough for me to bang him and I just went in. And then by God's grace, I got placed. Sean, yeah. um, before you had come here, I had my sources behind you. And I did hear that you were offered a package of 3 lakhs initially and you rejected it. Yeah. Rejected it. Okay. Well, even though the atmosphere was so uncertain and you had no idea what's coming up next, how did you do that? Yeah, so again, this was the time when, you know, recession, the news of Indian recession just came to all of us and we just witnessed our seniors not getting their offer letter. Like they got placed, but they're not getting the date of joining. So they were witnessing and uh, things were so, yeah, things were so bad. Even the faculties were like, if you're getting a 3 lakhs offer, just take it. But I was like, I didn't really come here for 3 lakhs. I mean, I'm paying my fees, the minimum, like I'm paying my fees, it comes out to around like 5 lakhs and totally for the full lakhs. Where is the return on investment? Right? <laughs> <laughs> the, minimum investment, the minimum should be like what? Above 5, right? Right, yes. And then again, like, you know, at, at a certain point, you just know that, you know, 
you, if you can crack three lakh three easily, right? You get the confidence that okay, I've cracked three easily. Let me try to go for six or maybe five. Then uh, you get an offer for I got I cracked seventy for five lakhs. I was like okay, let me try to go for something beyond. Then TCS was seven lakhs, and then I was like okay, now let me try. Wow. So three, that is how five, seven, and now presently twenty. Yeah. So that is how it is. <laughs> Well, seriously, Shyam, whatever you have answered me has fascinated me a lot. Let's bring back to my next question: What was your family's reaction to you when you told them? So, of course, you know, any parent, no matter what, they of course feel the happiness. You can just feel your mother's, uh, you know, sweetness and her happiness that she's not able to control her happiness and she's just jumping in excitement. Okay. So, so like. How was your parents' reaction when you said that you have rejected it? Like I have got this job and I'm rejecting it because I yeah. feel so. Uh, because frankly speaking, at present scenario, what I feel is if I say this to my mom, she'll be like, <laughs> "Accept what you're getting." Yeah, I can understand. I can totally understand and uh, resonate with that. But the thing is, my parents they trust me a lot. Like you know, they've sent me here for you know four years for this, and they trusted me. They're like, uh, "We trust you with whatever it is, and you know it better than you know us." Right. They're like you know. Okay. They're like you have been in touch, and you know, you're the one who's scoring marks. You're the one who's doing everything. Wow. So they they've always respected my decision, no matter whatever it is. Great level yeah. of understanding. Yeah, and I'm really thankful for that. That you know they've always supported me, no matter whatever I have done in whatever phase. They have always never they've never said no to anything. They're like, okay, if you think it is correct, go for it. We are here to support you. Well, Shan, through our conversations, I've come to a conclusion that you're a calculated person, which makes me think: What have you planned up for the future? Uh, nothing really, as you know. I didn't really have a plan that okay, I'm going to do this, 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 because I wanted to explore. See, when I came to this college, uh, I was into esports, okay. and I played professionally for uh, wow. Critical Ops. We had a world ranking as well. So, get, playing games true. got me into you know wondering how games are made and you know that aspect, and that is how I. Came close to computer science as a whole. Game inspired you to join computer science. Yeah, <laughs> which earned you twenty lacs. Yeah, so I see. I'm just saying that. So that is how I came here. Now again, uh, I really have a good job. So uh, at least for I guess one, two, three years, I, or maybe one or two years, I will be continuing with this because I feel right now I have done enough of studying part. Now I need to grow, you know, as a as a technocrat and as a individual, as a IT tech guy. So I think one or two years maybe I'll work. After that, if I feel I'm in a position to do masters, well, now we are at the discussion of your future plans. Mm -hmm. Have you ever considered joining the civil service? Uh, not necessarily. No, not. It didn't really come to me at any point of time in my life uh, because, as I said, you know, from games I came into this, and then I really was interested when I, you know, explored the domains. Right. Even right now, I am an enthusiast of machine learning, data science, and uh, development as such. So. Joining in you know, a civil service has never really came to me as as such. Shyam, with this professional life, how did you manage your social aspect? Like, did you have any girlfriends or something? Yeah, interesting question. And uh, <laughs> as you might have seen, like you know, you might have seen me come to your class even before. Like, right. You know, yes. I am not really a type of guy who is an introvert or something. I really like to socialize. Okay. And that is one of the reasons why people know me. It's, it isn't because I'm you know I have done something. It is because you know even I go out and talk to them. You But you still haven't answered. We have. Welcome to that. Welcome to that. Yeah, I've had uh, certain girl space friends. Okay, girls. But then I guess friends, yeah. right? Yes. Now again, if that question I answer, don't you think you sh people should do their own homework? Like if I reveal too much about myself, don't you think they'll? Don't you want some co comments on your video? No, I am not particular about it. You can share. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm sure. Because I think. And uh, I guess the audience will agree with me. Because I think uh, revealing too much about myself might be problematic. Does it matter? <laughs> the audience is curious. I mean, I will see every student. They they go through the puberty phase, and you know they do find someone that they find you know they they find attractive. So you them. had one. Yeah, I had one. That's it. That's this is the answer we were expecting, right? So Sean, thank you for coming to our show. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. The realistic answer, the fascinating points that you have discovered. Really opens up world, okay? But you have come empty-handed. We're not going to let you go empty-handed. We oh, do have me. something for you. I love you too. As a mark of appreciation, I like to present you with this. Thank you so much. John, all the very best for the upcoming. We hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much, and I hope to come again soon. Like right, yeah. right.